Bar Rescue's biggest stress test fails. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mike MGTV, and today we're gonna be reacting to another episode of Bar Rescue. As a reality TV show bartender myself, I have a lot of shit to say about stuff like this, especially because stress tests I deal well with. You want to talk about a stress test? Work in WeHo during Pride. You ever get attacked by an army of twinks who all want vodka sodas? Girl, I handle stress well, believe it or not. Stress and anxiety are two different things, I wanna point that out. Anxiety, I don't really handle well. I break down all the time, we've done been new. But stressful situations, whether it be bartending or <laughs> dramatic moments across reality TV, I, I shouldn't say I deal with them well because I don't. <laughs> I do my best. Relatively, I deal with them better than other people, in my opinion. <laughs> Speaking of reality TV, one of the shows I was on is up for an MTV Movie Award for Best Competition Series of the Year. All-Star Short, baby! If you guys want to vote, I'll put the link in the bio. You can vote so your boy could be an MTV Movie Award winner. And they said being a drunk fool would never pay off. I showed you, Mrs. Green! <laughs> Mrs. Green was my kindergarten teacher. She hated me. She told me to get a life and would bully me all the time. But she had saggy ticks that looked like flower bags. Who won, bitch? <laughs> I'm excited to react to this because I want to give my two cents. For the most part, I seem to agree with the way Bar Rescue handles certain things. Their stress tests sometimes are very produced. They set people up for failure in many different ways that I'm going to point out. I don't even know this video yet, but I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna foresee the future and <laughs> assume. I'm gonna point out when the bar is wrong, when the bartenders are wrong, or when the show is wrong for pulling some bullshit. Because even though some of these moments are produced, they're supposed to fail. Stress tests are literally to point out where your weakest moments are, even if it's not necessarily fair. But I'm gonna get into all that. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for future ones. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And follow me across all social media at MikeMGTV, especially over on Instagram. So sit back, relax, sniff some poppers, and let's watch some bitches be all stressed. <laughs> What's up, y'all ready or what? Yeah. Let's do this, come on in. Ready? Nope. Right this way. Thanks for coming out, y'all. Hey guys, so we got some drinks. Two hey. black lemonades. Two black lemonades, got it. What in the hell is a black lemonade and what are you shaking? A lemonade is so easy to make. It's vodka and lemonade or sweet and sour mix that you just build in the glass. What is a black lemonade? <laughs> Please tell me it doesn't have that activated charcoal bullshit. I will get pissed. Maybe it's like a blackberry lemonade or some kind of thing. I would love an explanation on what's actually in the drink so I could give opinions on how fast they should be able to make it. Two black lemonades. Why are you putting it in there? Why do you always make oh, it in first? Yes. You just put it in the exact same tin that I told you not to put it in. Yes. Pour them out and do it again. Okay. What is the reasoning for A, putting a lemonade in the tin? Are you shaking the berries? That's the only reason I could think of. Is it a liqueur? What's going on? And also, if you are shaking it, what's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with that tin? Did they make something else in it first that would like contradict the flavors? The only time you gotta honestly worry about that shit is if the flavors contradict one another. I rarely ever changed up my shakers. Unless it was like I made a dirty martini, which is like olive juice in one, then I'm not gonna make a lemonade in it because it's gonna be salty and it's not gonna fucking work. But if it's just fruity shit, who the fuck cares? Could be making quite a few drinks at once here. It's a little slow. A little slow. Uh, I mean, it took like 15 minutes. The way she just like tapped that shit, bitch, bang it on the table, break it off, and pour that shit. I mean, it took like 15 minutes to get our first drink. I mean, everyone was pissed for the most part from what I could see from people around me. So how many have already got a drink? Raise your hands. No. Who doesn't have one? Oh, come on, who's working this side? First of all, <laughs> yes, 15 minutes for a drink, absolutely ridiculous. But think about this to put into perspective. All these people came in at the same time. So instead of gradually building up a crowd to serve them as they came in, you had a bunch of people coming in at once. So obviously some people are gonna be waiting more than others. How long were these people in the bar before they asked who has a drink and who doesn't? Just to be fair, just to be fair, not saying that they're fast enough, I'm just being fair. So what do you think you could be doing to help? I'm the runner right now. Okay, so just give them the order. I got 11 black lemonades all day. It's the most orders we got in all week. What's up? 
First of all, 11 black lemonades. Okay, if you're making bulk drink orders, that's actually not that hard, especially even if you have to shake it. Those size drinks that I see, you could probably fit three of them in a shaker. Berries, ice, one, two, three, four count vodka, then you count for sweet and sour lemonade, shake them up, pour it out, in less than 45 seconds, you got six drinks. If you can build them in the glass, even fucking faster. During Pride, I'm shelling out 20 vodka sodas in 30 seconds. This is the first grilled cheese sandwich that's going out, and it's not going out because it's not done. Yeah. I've never sweated so hard over grilled cheese sandwiches in my life. How the fuck you fuck up a grilled cheese? I don't even know shit about cooking, but bitch, I can make a grilled cheese. That's like fucking up ramen. How the fuck is the toast burnt? And the cheese ain't melted yet. The hell is going on? <laughs> Over here at Black Lemonade. Anybody order Black Lemonade? Come on, girl. Let's get these guys some drinks. They're thirsty. I'm slow. If you're, everybody seems to be ordering whatever the fuck this black lemonade is. <laughs> if that's the case, bitch, start making them in bulk. Have them ready to go. If it's the signature cocktail that everybody seems to be butt chugging at this moment, bitch, be pouring that shit. Just going. Filling up multiple tins at once so you can shake, 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 senora, shake your body right. <laughs> I understood I had weaknesses, but we were way too packed for me to be as slow as I was. Who doesn't have drinks? None of you guys do. Who's thirsty? <laughs> Who has money? These bartenders, not only are they probably inexperienced and undertrained, aren't used to this crowd. I'm going to assume that this bar probably doesn't see this, which is why it's a stress test and they're set up to fail. But they're getting a realistic vision on what their job would be like if the bar was more popular and successful. They're only going to succeed if it's not doing well. That's how you weed out the shitty bartenders and bring in more experienced ones. Because to be honest, if the bar was successful, a lot more experienced bartenders would want to work there because they're going to make more money. So these shitty bartenders wouldn't get the job in the first place. That being said, I never got hired for a bartending job because I was necessarily good at it. I always was, but I find it funny that every bartending job I had, part of the interview was take your shirt off. <laughs> What does that say? Yes, get the money, get the money! All right, I'm sorry, can I get you anything else? All right, here we go. Instead of taking a drink somebody sipped and didn't like and bring it back to the bar, Miles gave it to another customer. So another customer got a drink that another customer had already taken a sip out of. That is disgusting! That is just lazy. He trying to be sneaky and done got caught, bitch. That is nasty. You know where those fucking lips been? They could have just come in from sucking a dick out of a bathroom stall. I gotta stop just taking away from like gay bar experiences. It should be different. That's being completely uninformed and ignorant. And you can't take a drink from one person and give it to another. I'm sorry. I knew I was the wrong decision to make and I did it anyway. You got caught in that, goddamn it. I'm not mad at you for doing it. I'm mad at you because you were dumb enough to get caught. <laughs> Life lessons my dad taught me. That explains a lot. Hey, I'm gonna need some glassware. I need, I need more glassware. We're out of glassware. So you don't have enough glasses for you a full room. Glass, no. Sorry, folks, we're out of glasses. <laughs> tell him, don't tell me. I got a feeling none of you are gonna have a drink. This is what I'm talking about being set up for failure. And because it's a bar that will never experience this crowd unless they're doing a TV production or grow gradually so they could redo inventory on shit like glasses. If you don't have enough glasses, that means you never planned on having a crowd like this or were never prepared to in the beginning, which is honestly good that the stress test is calling that out because if you're gonna be more successful, bitch, A, you gotta have shit to put the drinks in. That's gotta suck going to work just knowing you're gonna fail. It's like walking into Drag Race and seeing Sasha Colby walk in. You're like, well, I'm fucked. Because <laughs> you got to give up your glass for you to get a drink. The bar is now in a complete shutdown because we have no glasses. I'd like to continue the stress test, but I can't. Guys, you got to get your together here. You got to focus on your business. I'm opening this bar. Go to the front door, invite people in, do the best you can. Everybody, come on in. Okay, look what I'm talking about. This whole crowd walking in at once. <laughs> at once. So obviously the people in the back of the line are going to be waiting a lot longer than the people in front of the line getting to the bar first. And then they're going to go to the people in the back of the line and be like, how long were you waiting for a drink? Oh my god! So much longer than the people that were waiting in the front of the line? Shut! How's everybody? Hi, guys. Hi. Can I have your Texas tea? Of course, baby. Thank you. Ounce and a half. 
music. Stop, stop. Pause. That big ass... That big ass ice for a Texas tea? No. <laughs> big ice chunks like that are for specific cocktails. Because also you're paying for the volume of a drink, not the amount in it. Let's just point that out right here right now so nobody thinks they're getting ripped off by the amount of ice in your drink because it's supposed to matter for the cocktail. In this case, you are getting ripped off because a Texas tea don't got ice like that, bitch. It should be crushed ice or at least like cubed or something that's not a giant fucking block because the volume left in the glass is not going to be enough to make a Texas tea properly. It's not iced all the way to the top. I, I, I did, I did, I said, I did, I But you it. didn't all the way to the top. It's watering down their drink before you even do it. Okay. I would punch her in the face. Are you fucking kidding me? First of all, don't fucking touch my drink till I'm done with it, bitch. You didn't ice it all the way to the top? Okay, add ice. And then to say, no, you're watering it down before, no, you're not. There was, first of all, there wasn't even enough ice in the glass. So if anything, it's not getting watered down enough for that specific cocktail. There's not enough ice in that drink. Start over. Just add ice on, what? Okay, on my way with sliders. Coming through, coming through. That's a 10 count. What are you doing? No, no, that was, no, that was a, not a six count. That was a 10 count. That's over serving <laughs> on the bar top. Never. Okay, okay, that would be a reason to start a drink over if you over served of it. But then you gotta put it in the computer as a spill, otherwise you're gonna get fired. <laughs> you gotta track the amount of alcohol that's going in and out. Normally, micromanaging like this would piss me off because it actually makes you slower. It actually makes it harder to bartend, especially when someone is in your space as you're trying to move around and work. However, for a stress test, yes, I understand. We're in the ice bin. You put everything back where you pick it up. You're making a mess. Everything goes back in its place so that it's there when you reach for it. This is chaos. That's actually a good tip. She's coming across very abrasive because she's doing her job. But everything does need to go back exactly where it's supposed to be. Because half the time, you're honestly not even looking for what liquor it is. It's muscle memory. When you're busting and moving around like crazy and all your hands are going all over the place, when I'm making like 600 drinks, I'm not even looking at the bottle. It's muscle memory. I know where to reach, where to grab, to pour a certain ingredient. That's it. So that's a very important thing that you need to know when bartending. There's no organization. There's no mise en place. The overpours are out of control. She's not thinking through her cocktail recipes. I need a lot more time. Let me go and just say right now, I would fail a stress test. Not because I'm not fast enough, because I would be cussing bitches out. I'm so sorry. One of my biggest problems is keeping my mouth shut. Surprise, surprise. Who's surprised? Not a goddamn person. But if that bitch was talking shit about me as I'm right over here working, you know I'd be like, you better get the fuck up, slut. All the way to the top, all the way to the top, all the way to the top. Stress test is literally going horrible, as you can see. It's boring now. Honestly, you want to go home and get the hell out of this place. How is her biggest problem being able to fill the glass up with ice? Bitch, scoop bigger! Sorry about the, all the ones. I need change. I, need I don't have a car. I want you to help me do something. Sure. I don't believe they have enough money in their cash register to run this bar. Here's a hundred dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Order one drink and pay with that hundred dollar bill. That one cocktail should drain their entire bank. That is terrible. When I would start my shift, you start with like 500 to $1,000 of change in the bank just to start so you can make change no matter what. And if you need to run to the bank, that better be a management job, but that should be done before the shift even starts. Basic one-on-one -on -one stuff. I'm not even a manager, bitch. I'm a bartender and you just know that shit. If you don't have enough in your bank when you're starting, I would literally go to management and be like, what the fuck am I gonna do if somebody asks for change? Just say no. I don't want to not be able to serve a drink because I don't have change. That's fucking bullshit. What can I get for you, baby? 625, baby. Out of 100. 94, 25. I'm out of points. Walking next door. I have to go next door for change. How much change do we have in the drawer? Are we out of money? Can you open it? We have no ones. We have no ones. That bitch running to get ones. Oh my God. Ones are like, you have to have the most ones in the drawer. You have the most ones and less fives, less tens, and obviously less bigger bills as you go. The next person who orders a drink takes the whole damn place down. How do you run a business like this? Listen, folks, we can't do this. Shut it down. 
There's no way we can tr do transactions here. This is unbelievable. Come back in two nights. We'll show you how this is done. First of all, you don't need to shut it down because there's plenty of places that do card only, especially in this current time and day. In 2023, it's not that rare to find places that don't take cash. It's annoying. Trust. But shutting the whole bar down is a bit excessive. Hi, guys. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, guys. Yeah. Heather and Howard need to function like partners. I'm a little apprehensive about the state of this bar, but I need to know what I'm dealing with. What can I get for y'all? These are the drinks that we have right there. Okay, so two spice pineapple. A menu! I'm already impressed. Bitch, I throw away those fucking menus. I'm like, you can have a vodka soda, rum and coke. I'm moving quick. What do you want? Mojito? Go fuck yourself. What are you making? The spice pineapple. Anybody else want a spice pineapple? <laughs> Okay, make three, yeah. make four. You see how I'm doing it? That's a great fucking tip. What he just did right there. What he just did when you're making one drink while you already have the ingredients around you or in your hands, asking people right in your direct vicinity who else wants that. Great thing to do to fucking move faster, especially for mixed drinks. But even for smaller drinks, like if someone orders like a vodka soda, I'm going to look around at the people next to them and said, does anybody else real quick want a vodka soda? And you're talking as you're pouring. Oh, you do? Three other cups up. Thank you very much. Just pouring it straight across, going in with the gun. <laughs> Done. That's how you move quick. One pineapple. Look at this back of the room. Who's working this side? Are you on uh, this side? Yeah, we're waiting. Let's we're, go. Come on. We, we, we got tickets right here. Service. So I need two crown peaches. So what are you making? The crown the, peach. You making the what? Uh, Thank you. You already caught. What they need is a bartender specifically set to work the service well. What's going wrong here is they're trying to run the whole bar and make drinks for the service well, which is harder. If it's a slow night or there's not a big crowd, then you could do everything. But at busy bars like this, there's always one bartender on staff whose main job is to work the service well to do the tickets while the other bartenders take care of everybody else standing at the bar. So this setup right now is destined to fail. Hey guys, just so you know, these are first and then this is the newest, okay? Okay. John, look at this. All these tickets right here quote-unquote service bar tickets so heather yes sir manage look at that let's go we'll get all those tickets they are not in the you need to know the order process i don't like that they're coming in in direct tickets when you're doing a service well they need to come through a machine because the first ticket that comes out is the first one you make and then there will be another one attached to it and another one attached to it and another one attached to it when i'm working and it's crazy sometimes you'll have a stream of tickets laying out waiting for you but you always know which one to do first this shit where it's just laid out around the bar dumb oh my god i need one two i need two crown peaches heather heather like four or five in a row heather yes sir what are you doing making more pineapples how do you make those you make, you them? make them like this we only have one bill drink you gotta shake them it's gonna taste like I'm not sure if we're getting closer to father. I like that the manager here seems to be trying to help the bar staff by helping them make drinks. But if you're going to do that, you also got to know how to make the drinks because then you're just fucking it up and making everybody look bad. That is why it's important for management to have experience in other areas of the bar service. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I really thought we might actually pull this out. No, you do not do that ever. What you... Nope. It's complete chaos. We completely unraveled. Look at this. If Phil isn't standing next to Heather, we don't get any drinks out. They're blowing it already. We're... I saw a fucking spoon! Get it out! Get it out of there! <laughs> Unless you're making a layered shot or a layered martini, get that fucking spoon out of my face. Look at this, Sean. One big cut right here in the center of the bar. And they're just all funneled right into one spot. This needs to be fixed. We need yeah. to change this around. That cluster fuss, fuss, that cluster fuss, it's because I took a shot. That cluster fuck is because the service wells aren't spread out. There should be a service well on one side of the bar, a service well on the other side of the bar, so they could each take a half, and then a service well where you're making the orders that are coming in from the table. That's that on that. If the bar is extra big, that's when you add them out more in the middle to break it up. But every bartender should stay in the area of their service well so you don't have to cross over, get in each other's way, and all the bottles and all the cups and everything should be in arm distance. Have any of you guys paid for these? 
So you have no credit card or anything, right? I don't think anybody in this whole bar has paid for anything. They're trying to be faster by not charging people for drinks and they just got busted because that's the dumbest thing ever. That means they're not even taking tips. They're very aware that they're on the show. Mostly I call people out for having no clue that they're on the show and being even dumber. These people are trying to be fucking sneaky and handing out drinks and not waste time ringing it up and charging people because they think they don't have to because they don't think that's what they're being watched for. Stupid. You're still running a business. Why are we here today? What is our purpose? To make what? Money. Money. So, have you guys paid for your drinks? No. Have you guys paid for your drinks? No. Did they take your money? Did they take your money? So anybody who got a drink who didn't pay for it, raise your hand. Heather, look around the room. They just been handing out free shit? What was the thought process? What was the thought process? What is this, a frat party or a bar? You're not collecting any fucking money. What are we doing here? Heather, somebody answer me. Even in high school, I knew better. I mean, allegedly. <laughs> when someone's coming into the bar and we got beer in the house, you pay five bucks to get in, bitch. We gotta pay for this shit. And make a little, you know, income sometimes, but we wouldn't tell people that. <laughs> to make money and to make drinks fast and collect everybody's money. All right, y'all two do this. I'm gonna start making sure everybody pays. Over a hundred bar rescues, and I'm still blown away. How are the bartenders doing the drinks, and then the owner has to make sure everybody pays? It should be a, it should be a flow. What do you want? How many? Thank you. One, two, three. Drink. Swipe. Here you go. Thank you. What do you want? Ba ba ba. One, two, three. Go. Thank you. It's a flow. This is so incompetent. It's wild to me. Heather, is this getting better? I feel like if you give us maybe 30 more minutes, we can. Who the hell wants to wait? No. Okay. We failed. Close this freaking bar. Because this is ridiculous. And we only become more of a mess by the minute. That's very true. No amount of time is going to help you catch up. With this crowd, you're only going to fall further behind. It's not necessarily the service that's the problem. It is the fact that there's no system. Nothing has a rhyme or reason. The tickets are coming in wrong. Everything's a mess. No one's charging you for drinks. You can't make the drinks fast enough. Management has no idea how to help. And when they do help, they're doing it wrong. This was a clusterfuck. Flavor Blaster, baby. Flavor Blaster. So if you want some flavor, go ahead and squeeze that right in there. We'll get right to you. We're gonna bust their butts tonight. Have you guys ordered yet? Side, that girl, that bartender, is the first bartender I saw this whole episode who knew how to fucking shake something. See how she went, mm -mm, instead of just, uh, fucking shake a drink. If you're gonna shake a drink, shake a drink. To dump his ice, he's gotta go over here. To get the mint and garnishes, you gotta go over there. To pour it, you gotta go over there. Why don't you go over her? I'll go over you, Phil. Come on over on top of it. Let's see if we can play pyramid while we're back here. Every well should have its own setup. Every well should have its own stock of glasses. Every well should have its own set of garnishes so you don't cross over anybody. That's how you get in each other's way, which does what? slow you down. Whether, if management doesn't have this in place, ask for it or set it up yourself. Like if I'm working an event, like, a, like at something that doesn't know how to set up a bar correctly, I get there early, I set it up myself because this is exactly what the fuck I don't want to deal with. This bar confines you, it restricts you. There's no room to move, there's no room to work. It can't possibly succeed. Let me get through here. <laughs> how do you work like this? This is a great example on why it's also a problem to overstaff a bar. This is why you have to have fast and efficient bartenders. So you don't have to do this. There should be max three people behind that bar. Two people managing the bar, one person doing the service. Honestly, really good bartenders only need probably two people back there. When you put too many bartenders back there, it actually is detrimental. That's why, honestly, bitch, when I was working, if management was back there in my way, I'd tell them to get the fuck out of here. You wanna yell at me? Yell at me later. Right now, I don't need you doing this because <laughs> I'm not doing a stress test. But this is showing you exactly why you can't have too many people behind the bar and why bartenders get mad when they're overstaffed. It's not just that we're gonna make less money from tips, especially if we're fucking pooling, but you just get in each other's way, slow each other down, and then make more money as well. Make less money. I mean, make less money. No one's gonna complain about making more money.
<laughs> Nobody's ordered over here. Come on, guys. We can't just do one side. Who's got this side? Well, I got film fire over okay, here. Okay, Anthony, then claim the side. Be okay. a leader. I'll be with you on a minute. Sorry. What are you doing? This is why everything needs to be spread out evenly. If you have that side of the well, you should not be over there. Let the person whose well's over there deal with over there. If the garnishes are over there and you need them over here, take them and bring them over here. Or ask the busser to set it up. Look at me. You guys need to communicate, okay? Yes. If you guys, if you're, yeah. if you're well, looking, we, 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 yeah. we, 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 what? Oh, I saved it with all the cards that I put here. Okay, Jeffrey, right there. Sounds all the good. Friends, so, so communicate yeah. with each other. Did anybody understand anything they just said to one another? Was that a different language? Am I being insensitive? I speak drunk, and I still didn't understand that. <laughs> so there. You guys are not no, even. Not Listen to me. Uh, I'm a little nervous and I feel a little uh, like I should be behind there with him, but I know I'm just in the way. I'm just complicating it by doing that. Where's your garnish? Hold on. He's very, very right. But you know what you could do? Walk around to the crowd. If you know you're in the way behind the bar, deal with everything else on the other side of the bar. Run the drinks. Ask people how everything's going. Explain the situation. Try to help them as best you can without getting in the way. Don't just stand there and do fucking nothing. <laughs> Dominique, put this in front of Buddha there for now. Tonight is our stress test, and this has never been a full service bar before. All right, go ahead out there and invite him in. All right. All right. The drinks we're having to make are as simple as they could possibly be. And I love that he's pointing this out. They're getting an audience and a crowd that they never get before. They're not meant to succeed. You're not really meant to do well during the stress test. What the stress test is for is to point out your weaknesses, point out the flaws so you know what to fix in case you ever encounter a crowd like this or to know that even if the crowd isn't this big, you're always going to be prepared. Hey. I was about to say that would be my favorite order, but when he said do not serve her, because uh, she's obviously intoxicated. Look at those bangs! Bitch don't know where she is right now. She's sweaty as hell. It would be an easy order to make, but it would also be over serving and be dangerous and detrimental, not only to the person, but for the bar itself, because you'll get sued. Baby doll, I think you've had a little too much to drink. So the doors open and they actually surprised me because they cut off. The woman is seems surprised that she's cut off. She's leaning on the bar, cigarette in hand, sweaty bangs down her face. Mama, you need to fix shit other than your liver, girl. Where's all the Oh, there it is. I'll do anything. Y'all just keep pouring. Where's our bank? We have no money? Oh, Where's Tracy? You don't have any, any banks in your drawers? Where's Tracy? I have no bank. Who normally puts the banks out? How do they notice now once the crowd's in there that they have no bank and not enough money? I mean, we've already discussed why money's important and having change is important. But you get your bank when you start your shift. Management should have them all ready to go, split up evenly for every person working at the bar. How do you not know that until you're already working and in the midst of it? How the hell we open a bar without banks? The fuck did I just say? I'll be right with you. Tracy, was there not a bank under the register for the no, no, it should have, but okay, it was a mistake. Tracy is so lazy. You don't understand how hyper-focused bartenders need to be in knowing that there's a bank and how much is in the bank. Because at the end of the shift, if you don't return all the original money, you need to pay it yourself. Let's say you start with a thousand dollar bank and you only make $400 in a shift and the bank goes missing or you don't know. Bitch, not only do you have to give them all the money you made, that $400, you need to pay the bar the difference. I would then owe the bar $600. So how do you not know what's going on? Not only how much is in your bank, where the fuck it is. Because she did a six count in a rocks glass. Unless that's some kind of old fashioned straight up kind of double. Bitch, the hell? And it wasn't one, two, three, four, five, six. It was one and two and three and four. And that was a 12 count, bitch. Chicken strips going. You need them? Chicken fingers are up. Why do I have rock 
chicken sitting out over here. Don't forget, you're touching those doors when you have chicken. On. Just keep Come one on, hand clean. Here's my problem. Pause. Raw chicken out at the bar? At the when everybody's running around making drinks and touching shit? Bitch, what's one thing we know? John Tafford's biggest buttons deals with raw fucking chicken, and that shit's out at the bar? I got raw chicken juice all over Everyone. that counter, and I got bartenders walking by and touching this stuff. We can't do this this way. Look at the ice, it's dead drink now, guys. No, I Everything you now made is cross-contamination. Anything you touch now after that raw chicken got anywhere near you is contaminated and can get people sick with salmonella. And all the garnishes you touched that went into people's drinks, that is insane. How was that left out? That needs to be in the back, in the kitchen, and only dealt by people who are specifically meant to deal with it. We ain't been serving since we've been in here. Oh, oh, and it's just, it's just, oh my god, we don't know where they go! We've been like an hour, we just got our first set of drinks. The underpoint on that one. How is there no one running the drinks? What do you mean you don't know where they go? They go to the people that order them. Or if you're making them for tables, there needs to be a runner bringing them the drinks because they're the ones who are supposed to know where they go. What the fuck is going on? We're running around. It's a mess. Come on, guys. It's very watered down. It's very bitter. This tastes like it crap. Yeah. First two. I've never ordered it. One and two and three and four and five and six. First of all, too long, even if it needs a six count. One, two, three, four, five, six. The slightest difference makes a huge difference, especially with a lower volume cocktail. These drinks are probably way too strong for this crowd. <laughs> Two ounces. I'm counting my head. I've done this for 11 years. You gotta get your beats right. Why is she counting to six if it's two ounces? That is a four count, not a six count. And not with Mississippi's in the middle of it. The fuck is going on? Tracy stands in a corner, puffing on his cigar as his life goes down the tubes. The people that are driving the car are asleep at the wheel. That's the problem. When the management and owners don't know what the fuck they're doing, they set the tone for the rest of the fucking staff. That was a pour. As soon as he told me I was counting too slow, I, I realized what my mistake was and I corrected it. Come on, boys, go! How did it take that long for somebody to- I feel like I've said it to this like three times at this point. When you're yelling at somebody about what they're doing wrong, explain to them why. How did this girl not know how that she's doing the counting wrong? Not only is two ounces not a six count, she's still counting the count too slow. She's doing like over a double. Anybody? Oh. Oh. Watch the floor. Where's that? Someone clean up the floor oh. before I break my leg. Tracy! Tracy Bigford! You might grab the mom and try to mop back here. It was just standing there. But that's the way it's always been. Oh, the manager who doesn't know what to do. You know what you could do? Clean shit. Make sure everything's in order. Put things away. You know, clean up the area. Help out your staff that seems to be struggling doing a million. There's a million things you could do. If you're doing, the only thing you could do wrong is to do nothing. I sensed that Tracy was lazy. His wife begged him to get a mop bucket. <laughs> He doesn't know how to use a mop bucket. Why? Because he sits on his ass and he watches his wife use it all day. This guy's not lazy. I think he might just be a little dumb. <laughs> There's no initiative. There you go. Tell her you're there so she doesn't step over the mop and break her neck. Are you okay? I tweaked my knee and I'm limping. All because of a wet floor. That would Okay, there's chicken shit on the floor at the bar. Also, I saw fryers behind the bar. They weren't in a separate... How are the fryers next to the bar where you're moving around sporadically? God forbid the oil spills or injures somebody because it's hot fucking oil and the food shouldn't be around cross-contamination, things like making drinks. Like, this is insane. Who set this shit up? How does this... That would never pass a health inspection. I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm short-circuiting. I'm ready for a big night. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's get some drinks. I want to see how Dave and Sarissa work when they're sober. But most important, I want to see if Karen can lead with a good attitude. 
We need shots, baby. Oh God, we're all we're putting everything on the line for Karen to leave the good attitude. Oh, we all know Karen's gonna be pissed about something. Yes, when you're done, if you can make her the ten shots, so that doesn't happen. Yes, I'm sure so well. Okay. I that would be a great way for management to help. If you're going around serving shots, the management can do shots. That, you can't fuck up. The shots. Do the little tedious things to save the bartenders as much time as possible. It, everybody, it needs to be a well-oiled machine. You're only as strong as your weakest player. So anybody that's struggling in any area of the bar, help them out if you have time. Had to wait a while, sent my friend up there to go get it, and we're still waiting. These people, these women, they've been okay. sitting at this bar for a half hour, right there in the front. And this is your job as managers, to get these people together and faster. We have to accomplish this in the next 24 hours, and we're screwed. There's no excuse excuse for that. I know before I was making an excuse saying the whole crowd's coming in at once so obviously people are going to be waiting longer than others. But if you're at the bar, if you've been standing at the bar for a half hour and nobody's attended to you, that is laziness, that is neglect, that is being unaware of your work surroundings. Unacceptable. So how long are we going to open? 40 minutes. How many cocktails have we got now? Six in 40 minutes. <laughs> We got out six cocktails in 40 minutes. Burn the place down. Burn it down. Burn the whole place down. Mama, what the fuck? I will make, I don't care, even if it's a mojito, my most hated cocktail to make, a raspberry mojito. Even worse, because it makes a fucking mess. I can make 90 thousand of those in 45 minutes are you fucking kidding me there's not one single excuse or explanation i can come up with a bar staff not just one person a staff only putting out six cocktails in 45 minutes i'm gonna shit my pants they've been waiting an hour for a pizza these two okay let me go check on that say something to them smile say something to them i'm gonna check out it for you serve them I mean, do you not want to be here that is the worst service I've ever seen in my life. I've been avoiding talking about the food because honestly, I don't know much about food and I don't want to, you know, give my opinion where it's not merited. But one thing I do know about is service and working in a stressful situation and working when you don't want to. I do that right here on this YouTube channel. Sometimes I'd be depressed as hell and have to go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Bitch service. These people have been waiting over an hour for a fucking pizza. I'm gonna go check on that for you. Fuck this place. Fuck this place! Tonight I see her attitude. She's working because I'm telling her to. There's no change here. Matt! <laughs> this woman is being asked to be more enthusiastic and more attentive to the customers. She's on her phone smoking a fucking cigarette. I'm about to have extreme bowel movements if this shit doesn't change because it's gonna fucking aggravate me. And I. Uh, uh, ah! This is the hospitality okay. business. Smile. Do this. Right. Come on, Karen. You can do this. I got it. I'm speechless. Dave doesn't know what he's doing. Matt doesn't know his business. He can't hold this place up. Karen's attitude. The attitude's definitely still there. That stubbornness is still there. We're fighting. Bitch still in the back smoking a cigarette on the fucking phone! Fire her! Fire her! I'm so empathetic with service industry people. I always come through for them when I can and I try to be on their side, but that, it's just disrespect! <laughs> Tonight's our stress test, so I have just the right demographic coming. 21 to 34 years old. We open in 10 minutes, guys, okay? Tonight I want to see- That is the stress test. Oh, God. At a gay bar, the stress test would be 50 bachelorette parties. You ever have to make 5 million pink things, 300 blue things I had once on spring break, and 200 give me something sweet or fruities? Mitch, what the fuck is going on? Here's a shout out to Keila. Shut the fuck up. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So right now, Zeus is doing a great job. All right, what else I have here? She's making her drinks really fast, and she's making them perfect. Good job, Susie. Good job. Way to use both your arms. I was gonna say, this bartender is handling this stress test really, really well. Obviously, she's not gonna be perfect, but the way she's shaking drinks, the way she's focused, the way she's listening to critiques, not talking back, getting the drinks out, double at a time, bitch better fucking work. This is again, there's no runner. There's no system in place. The biggest thing I'm learning about why these stress tests fail is that there are not proper systems in place. So no one can do their job properly. Chicken wing right here. 
Pops, help me out here, Pops. Pops is doing everything he can right now. He's getting juices. Dad, can you get more cranberry? Going on the floor. Take it now. Take it now. There's people doing jobs that shouldn't be their jobs. There's people trying to do everything and that is why you fail. When you do too much, when you overexert yourself, you are setting yourself up to be a failure. There needs to be a bartender, a bar back, a busser, a uh, food runner, a waiter or waitress that also is the food runner, a cook, management, and the bar owner. Those are the jobs. So everybody has a specific thing to do to make sure everything runs like a well-oiled machine. Is that a fire? Turn this fryer off immediately. We need to pull. Bitch, the place is on fire. Mama, the, mama, the, mama, the oil. The oil fryer is on fire, bitch. The fuck? That means it's dirty as hell or it hasn't been run properly. I gotta I close it down before everybody dies. Like, what? There you go. That's good. Now it's off the Susie. Make those drinks. Six at a time. Let's go. With everything that sucks about this bar, the bartender here, I gotta give kudos to, respect. They're making six drinks at a time. That's how you fucking do it, slut. What the hell is going on? I might need closer to Danjo. That's what happens when you don't clean your kitchen. You what did I say? Shit is dirty because old crusty shit is being set on fire on the burning oil grill! But come on, guys, it's getting worse. Here we go. That whole bar is about to be engulfed in flames. An oil fire is in much worse than a regular fire. You can't even put water on it. You put water on an oil fire, it's gonna make it worse. They're trying to put salt on it now, also making a mess. Bitch, sh th shut it down. I agree. Shut it down. This is getting worse, guys. Get me a fire extinguisher. This is what happens, Robin. This is your fault. This is what you did. You gotta do it. Extinguish it out. Do it. Kill it. Shut the fuck up. Your fire extinguisher is dead for Christ's sakes. Give me that thing quickly. Yes. It's gonna flare up. You gotta do it. And now you can't even cook. Now you can't make any food back there. Oh my god. <laughs> Everything has leaked out now into the bar and also has gotten into everybody's drinks because the smoky shit affects the cocktails. It, shut it down. Shut it down. I know it. Before I think I literally said burn it all down. They literally did. I need everybody out of here. I don't want you breathing this in. I don't know what happened. Smoke came off the kitchen everywhere. Penny. Look at your kitchen. This is what Rob did to you. And you embrace him for it. Bitch, the fuck just happened on this day? That was wild. So what did we learn from this video mainly? It wasn't really the fact that the bartenders were that terrible. Obviously, if anything, they were just inexperienced and could be fixed with minor training. The main problem in these stress tests, which is what they're for, what they point out, is that there's no system in place. In order for everybody to be able to do their job well, there needs to be a system in place that makes sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible before you're in the thick of it and panicking and don't know what the fuck to do. Plan. Plan your business so you don't fuck up. That was insane. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. In the comments down below, let me know some other things that you'd like to see me react to, including any of the bar rescue things, drinking videos, cocktail videos, fun alcohol videos, other reality TV shit. Let me know in the comments. Special thank you to everybody over on Patreon, especially the regulars of Barflies. You guys make this channel possible and I appreciate you more than you know. And special shout out to this person over on Twitter if you would like a special shout out, be sure to retweet my videos when they come out. If that's it, guys, thank you for watching. As always, my name is Mike from GTV, and you are fucking welcome. Bye bye.